I've I've done other ones where a guy lost his hair once. Right, I tattooed all his head to look like a crew cut. You know what I mean? And I was getting so bored with with doing it that I just wrote "fuck this" on the back of his head in dots. Right, and um, when I finished it, you could still read it. top of the curls it looks like it has 666 and I didn't notice that till later so good thing I'm not a religious person I, I said oh cool but I don't regret getting this tattoo one single day I guess the most traditional way to go about it is to have one piece on your entire body when people ask you know why you get so many I just tell them it's it's who I am on the inside now it's coming out on the outside My dad was a junkie, and he was a great artist, so he would literally, I'd watch him tattoo himself with his own homemade guns, dominatrix girls covering up all of his track marks. I got tattooed by a six-year-old, um, the daughter of Inya Taylor III, her name's Ra. You know, put me back in my place. <laughs> I, I did discover new tattoo tribes that were not documented before. What this says in Japanese, this is the artist's name, Horihito. Temporary permanent hiatus. You know, when you go to his tattoo parlor, they've got pictures, like grainy fucking sepia pictures from like 1850 with a bunch of dudes standing around looking like, I'll just take this bamboo thing and shove it up your fucking nose and kill you now. I always consider myself as a freak. The British were tattooing like Indians and Pakistanis with like letters on, on, the, on the face and then deport them. I can't get a job now even if I wanted to. Yeah. The first free tattoo that I ever had was Paul Booth actually at the Ozfest. Paul's awesome. I wish he wasn't on the opposite coast of me. He hurts like a motherfucker. I won't do Christ portraits. <laughs> you can get fun, silly tattoos. I know of a guy who has a sacred cheeseburger flying down his leg. You know, that's a fun tattoo. A cucumber in boots. Uh... A liver custom, uh, slice of pizza. Uh, okay, the classical two Lego stones in chrome fucking each other. Well, particularly uh, ladies should bear in mind <clears throat> not to have one too small. Trying to get them on the cheap never ends up well. I think people who are prone to get tattoos feel naked without them. You know, in the 10 years I've been tattooing, it's just, it's been popular and just getting more popular the whole time. And You've been in the game a long time. You'll remember from the 60s and 70s, it was that classic tattoo 1%. I think just more musicians are getting tattooed. And what they actually concluded was, was that 1% of the American population was tattooed. It's, it's no 1% now. Now it's 24%. You know, you ain't 1% that are outlaw this side or the other. It hurts and it's the ultimate commitment, so of course it's cool. It's completely normal. You know, and anything cool gets its 15 minutes. But the thing is, tattooing is now part of the mainstream media. And now with the tattoo shows, I think it's, it seems like it's gotten more popular because of that. All these rock star kids are getting tattooed, like full sleeves and everything, and... Nobody can compete with me in what I do. That's the way I think, you know? And a tattoo isn't gonna change that. The most famous tattoo in the world has got to be the David Beckham Angel. He's one of the highest profile celebrities around and every time he gets tattooed, he's in the media and indirectly or directly, that then brings people into tattoo studios. I mean, now that I've done the full sleeve on him, I'm getting a lot of people coming in and they're all sort of saying, well, I want a black and grey sleeve with angels, yeah. And, I'll, and to be honest, I'm absolutely bored shitless with doing it. I've heard it said by a few people that it's probably one of the most iconic, certainly one of the most copied tattoos ever. 
if they see a really nice tattoo, like they'll see a portrait and go, oh my God, I didn't know you could do that on skin. McDonald's or something, and someone goes, hey bro, I got ink too, or I'm tatted. Wow, I, didn't, I can get something that cool, I'm gonna get a tattoo. First of all, I wanna fucking just kick him in a ding dang. You know, it's become really popular amongst, you know, bands and stuff. And people don't care as much as maybe 10 or 15 years ago. And it was like, oh wow. Like, even now when I get tattooed, I still get this fear, like, oh shit, my mom's gonna see it and she's gonna freak out. I still get that. In the beginning, it was rough, when, especially when I did my, my throat and my neck and everything. I didn't see my mom until I had, like, 10 or so. Like, you and I grew up with it. The tattoos meant something pretty exactly. I distinguished what side of it. Exactly. You know, the border you stood on. You know, like I didn't see her for a couple of years and I had already had my neck done and I had like a lot of tattoos on my arms. And she's a pretty religious lady, so. When I got my neck done, she cried. My mom cried and stuff. My grandmother didn't speak to me for five years because I, I tattooed my birth date on my arm. So she sees the numbers and she had had family lost in the Holocaust, so it was kind of, it was an awkward situation. My dad almost wouldn't let me leave the house because I was driving his car like an hour away to go get the tattoo and he was like, there's no way you're leaving the house. And I was like, fuck you, old man. My dad said he was going to kick me out if I did him. Oh, yeah, I remember that. So I did him anyways and he didn't kick me out. Oh, dad, no, they're, they're not that bad. I hid mine for a while. <laughs> my parents didn't know I had tattoos at first. I just tattooed my legs because um, I lived in their house. So I wasn't going to like blatantly disrespect them. I was just going to hiddenly disrespect them. When you're a younger man, you do everything to irritate your parents. When you get older, you try not to irritate them. <laughs> yeah, my mom was really upset. Like, she still makes comments about it to this day. My mom tried to rub my first tattoo off. My mother um, didn't like tattoos. But, you know, kind of half of what getting a tattoo is like kind of, you know, you're trying to ruffle a feather or whatever, you know. I remember when I was younger and I got my first tattoo, my mom would always just be like, oh, I really like the picture, but... I wish it was like on a, on your wall or something, like not on your arm. Yeah, my mom always asks why 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 don't just get a picture of it on a shirt. And I guess maybe that's kind of what I like about it. You know, it's like that rebellious thing. You know, it's that rebellion thing again. It's just the rebellion, the uh, the outlaw rebel. You know, it all comes with the territory. I think it's part it's part of the rebellion flag, I suppose. The badge of I'm different. Yeah. Piss your parents off, kind of gig, you know. I didn't believe the adults they told me it would hurt, you know, I thought they were just trying to talk me out of it. Brought some friends home to witness it and broke down in tears. I have a lot of tattoos, but I always get that feeling like I just did something bad. And then when I got my hand tattooed, I got it the day before Father's Day. And I showed him on Father's Day and he was like, oh, it's my favorite one. <laughs> like, actually, st st like, he gets stoked about them now. I've actually gotten, he's actually gotten tattooed now. When you see people with nice stuff, you, you want the same thing, and it's fashion, and it's, everyone is emulating each other. And more people in show business, you know, in Hollywood and stuff are getting tattooed, and all of that stuff is making it more popular. It's like, okay, you're in the back of the bus all of a sudden, Ooh, okay, it's all go good to go to the front. You don't need so much clothes. You know, did you show everybody the tattoo that you got last year in Ireland? I got this last year. It's the real illusion. It's like two tattoos here. And, yep. uh, that's right. I don't know what it is about Ireland and tattoos for you. I don't know. In, in a lot of bands, it's, you know, the way you look can be a, a big factor, but in my band it can't be. play this stuff because it's it's precise particular music. I really hoped that he was going to be good enough for the band because he sure looked cool. The fact that this punk comes along covered with tattoos and can play it better than all these jazz bows and fusion heads. 
plays it harder, with more attitude. It's just like a blessing for a guy like me. Like, I grew up and I was pretty much like, you know, the weirdo kid who was picked on and listened to like Green Day and the Misfits. And we're never in the, you know, on the cover of Billboard magazine, but every band that's in there can trace their, trace their DNA back to us. And I, and I noticed that the, when I first got my first neck tattoo that I stopped getting fucked with. I don't, I mean, I don't know why. Maybe, maybe she looked tougher or something. Years ago when we ran the Association of Professional Tattoo Artists, I remember we did a big thing saying, should we voluntarily refuse to tattoo people's faces? Actually, one kid, this crazy kid, asked me to uh, tattoo a demon on his cheek. I had a lot of requests. Not one of them did I think was serious. It's not that I wouldn't tattoo a face. Um, it'd have to be on uh, the right person. In our studio, we don't do facial tattooing and we don't do genital tattooing. On men. <laughs> Tweety pie on a guy's knob, dick. It was the smallest penis I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> so I had to pull it down, put this Tweety pie on it. When he left, I says, I hope that grows into a budgie one day. <laughs> I'm afraid of about tattooing a foreigner's cock. I've seen a couple of really, really nice done uh, uh, penis tattoos. Um, as a part of a big bodysuit, for example. This is one of the topics that comes up periodically. Sort of a 16-year-old kid comes on and says, gee, I like Kat Von D's nautical stars around her eyes and I want to get them. What I really liked about Kat was we went for an Indian meal and the waiter freaked out. He went, oh my God, you're the girl of Miami Inc. He went home and got his kids and she waited there so she could have a photo done with them, you know. And for me, it's like um, make a confrontation with this society. It's a really bad idea. You're not gonna attract business if you have shit all over your face. Tattoos are more acceptable now than they were 20 years ago, and 10 years from now, probably more acceptable than they are now. You oh. lose, you don't know what a person looks like, do you, if you do all your face? You know, if you want to advance at all in your career beyond the point of working in a warehouse, getting tattoos on public skin is a really dangerous proposition. If you are Maori, or you live in New Zealand, no problem. You can maybe get into trouble with, with Maoris. <laughs> you know why the Maoris got the tattoos on their faces? Because it's fucking cold in New Zealand and uh, that's the only place that wasn't covered by clothes in winter. First time I got, you know, a tattoo on my neck, you know, I, I got kind of like an anxiety attack right after I got it because it's like, shit, I can't really cover this up. Yeah, when you get the neck done, you kind of got to suck it up and just get it done. Yeah, there was like blood actually spurting out when I got it tattooed. I was like, I was looking at it just like, this is awful. I, mean, I did things that I would love to take back when I was 18. I just lucky I don't have to wear it on my throat. And after I was like, this is, this is, this is, I, I weren't happy. I just, cause, cause it was that much emotion. And the girl, I did four stars right there. And the other guy, I did two stars right there. And they're looking really nice. You know, when I saw like Mike Ness with the tattoos on his hands and his knuckles, it was like, I, I got it, I mean, that's so badass. I haven't tattooed a lot of faces. I've only done Paul Booth in my career. Past my threshold of pain and everything. It's quite the experience. Yeah, you know, he actually asked my dad to design it. And Felix drew up 42. <laughs> he was getting sick um, with cancer. And, uh, but I had asked him, I went to visit him and uh, asked him to design the tattoo for my head. Then he had to choose one out of 42, which was really hard. But, you know, he had no idea which one I'd pick. I had no, which, no idea which one he liked the best, and we came in on the same one. And then I had Philip tattoo it. 25 years on the skin, I haven't been on the face, you know. Having Felix design it and Philip tattoo it, uh, it was kind of, I guess, representative of something that I lack in my life, you know. A bit scary, actually. 
I still wear it proudly. It's the most empowering tattoo I've ever had. Otherwise, I've never met anybody that's convinced me that they knew what they were doing and they could deal with it. Well, actually, that's not true. I did Lucky Diamond Rich as well, but he was all black already, so... <laughs> and I got to go across the nose and stuff, which I'd always I wanted to do. Plan. And I did all these, like, home signs on him. So I would never do fingers, ne um, hands or necks on a first-time customer. I've had so many requests, but I always say no. Even Paul, I made him wait for a while. And it's kind of hypocritical, because I do have part of my face tattooed. Oh, but he got through to me, and so I did it, and it was nice. How could I possibly know that person well enough to know that they're not going to regret it someday? I don't need a tattoo somebody's face, just so I got a picture that I can print in the magazines and, and, and show people for fame and fuck the guys at life up at the same time. I've had the tattoo on my head ripped off, you know, and, and by a tattooer on a tattooer, which I don't understand. We played with Sheer Terror and the Crow Mags and the Bad Brains. It was a crazy hardcore show and a bunch of white powered skinheads came and this kid had a fucking Hitler tattooed right on his neck. This tattoo's mine, you know, and I won't have it bastardized, you know. No tattoo artist should want to even give that. If it's a fan, what do I do then? Does he still deserve to have his face ripped off if he's doing it out of admiration or tribute? You don't have to put it on him. But the tattooer that did it is another story. You know, he should know better. But there's a lot of tattoo artists that don't give a fuck, man. The problem doesn't so much lie in the public, it lies in the tattooers. Because the tattoo artist is the one who has to be ethical and responsible. Because if you don't care about ethics and tattooing, then maybe you're just doing the wrong thing. And if he's not being ethical and responsible, what the hell does the customer know? I mean, they don't know shit. They want to just do it to make their big 250 and get the fuck out. I don't think I'm helping him a bit if certain designs he picks. He might smoke pot, which is none of my business. He might have a lot of fun with it. I had a lot of fun with liquor. But I, why, why go out and wear a badge saying, I am a drunkard, I am high as a kite? We all know that a baby craps in his diaper. Well, why pull that diaper off in front of everybody and say, look what my baby does this, you see? I never put a swastika on my life until I got here. And I didn't do it then for the first year. But I got big bucks coming here, buddy. With money, I'll just take my business to Chicago. That's the way it happened. Now I got swastika. You think I like that swastika? And a man thinks I like it as a damn fool. You got a light touch, son. Yeah. Why'd you pick that one? I don't know. I've always liked cartoon rats, you know, and it used to be a nickname of mine when, when I was a kid at the beach and all that. And I just, I really like the looks of that on the wall. It's like it. I think that'll, do I think that'll hold me it. until the next one, won't yeah, it? We got it solid enough, Paul. Yeah, you yeah, just got a little that, that's not gonna go souvenir, anywhere. souvenir of stonies anyway. Yeah, it takes... Yeah, it looks like some of my relatives. <laughs> I remember some woman wrote me a prison letter. Her name was Troubles. <laughs> I've never had anyone saying, oh my God, she's got her hands tattooed. She wants to get a, um, an implant of like vampire bites, so she has two lumps sticking out of her neck, and then she wants me to tattoo to make it look like vampire bites. I, I notice also a lot more in like social settings where people are more elegant or more, you know, they're like... People in, 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 in Western Europe are not used to face tattoos. I mean, even I had like grannies say, oh, that's really pretty. But if the person's fully tattooed, certain age, yeah, I think, yeah, why well, not, you know, they can fucking assume it, yeah. Dick, do you want to spend the next 40 years putting on pancake makeup and worrying about whether you're going to sweat? In the end of the day, it's the responsibility of the customer who has to sign the contract. Teaching people to be realistic about the fact that uh, living in tattooed skin isn't always easy is an important thing. It's not something you should get if just to be cool. Like, it's not a, it's not a, I mean, it looks good, but it's not really, it's not like a, a piece of clothing. You can't just take it off when you want it. It's, it's something there for life. Three, two, one, go! Keep it! I got a secret! It's all too late!
guys are fucking mint. Thank you very much. I've seen really nice laser work, but I've seen also scars from other old lasers. Oh, I mean, tattooing's, it should be permanent, you know, and that's, that's the whole thing about tattooing. That whole, like, sanctity of the tattoo thing, um, I can relate to both sides of the fence on this. Because people do try and get rid of it using acids and things in it. Consider the fact of where the industry's at now and that sanctity's gone. People do make mistakes, and I have plenty of mistakes on me, so how could I possibly? I plan on getting laser removal when I've got the balls to do it, you know? You know, a, a neo Nazi that decides they, you know, have been, you know, want to change their life and want to get a swastika removed, I think that's great. It hurts. <laughs> Yeah, it smells like rock, uh, burning meat. A lot of people don't realize how much lasering hurts. Huh. I had both my arms complete from wrist up to the top and all my chest completely done. And it was the most horrible, painful thing that I've ever been through. It was a nightmare. It's quite amazing actually, tattoos are no longer permanent. I used to go over to mix in York, absolutely off my face, off on pethidine, tramadol, Valium, or whatever. Check that out, you know? It's gonna be gone. There's the first session. And I just used to sit there, and I used to come out with arms like Popeye. It works, it works. If you go to the right person who does it with the right laser, it works. A guy Atchison removed his whole arm and got it re-tattooed, and it blew my mind, you know? This is uh, Guy Atchison's second back piece. This was, this was Guy Atchison learning. I had a really good experience with tattoo lasering from my friend uh, Mick Tomo in, in England uh, because it worked great. He got something removed by laser one session and it's the, the best result that I've ever seen. It's done by a tattooer in England somewhere. Bernie's taking his arms off. Yeah, it's, they've, they've learned how to do it without any scarring. Lasering is actually breaking down the pigment and introducing it into your system. The immune system tries to digest this very small pigment pieces. doesn't work. So the color stays in the body. There's still medical doubts about like getting major laser work because it actually collects in your, in your glands. When I, when I studied, uh, we, had a, we had a body to open and he had a big tattoo on his chest saying born to lose, all black. His lymphatic nodules were black as polished coal. If you laser any tattoo colour that's got white or yellow in it, the white and yellow will turn black or grey. That was a white line within a piece of black tribal. So all the black's going but that line around the outside edge will never go. I actually had a woman come to me once who, like I say, she'd had the lip line put in, it'd been put in too deep, it spread. She then went to a laser clinic, had it lasered, and that then turned it black. So she looked like she had a, somebody had got a black felt tip pen and just fucking wiped it across the top lip. It looked a right mess. I had a woman ask me to tattoo her lips red, and I, and I was like, you know, I don't really know if this is going to work, and she was insistent. So I had this big magnum, and I, I tattooed her lip, and by the time I got here, it looked like Mike Tyson had give her a right up, like, you know? You used to see the gloucho marks, eyebrows, and the lopsided lips and stuff. I haven't seen those for a while. They seem to be getting it together, actually. But I had, a, I had a woman come in here who had some eyebrows done, and it looked like she'd had a big surprise. They were like, boom, like that. I was like, fuck me, look at her. I had my eyeliner done for, one, for, for, for uh, just to see what it's like. I guess the only bad thing about laser removal, like if some, somebody was going to say, okay, I'm going to get a tattoo, like they're getting their first tattoo, it's like, well, I'll get a tattoo, and if I don't like it, you know, I'll just get it lasered. Uh, that's a lot of bollocks. I'd say you shouldn't go into a tattoo like that. Yeah, that shouldn't be an option for people. Because they want to be trendy for two or three years, you know, they want to go with the stream and be cool, and uh, then they say, okay, now I'm uh, 25 or 30, but no, I, I will remove it, you know. Like we have one in the crew who's removing all of the tattoos, and it, like, it's, it hurts me to just hear about it. Like, I decided to be like this, and I never would remove 
uh, a tattoo, never. There is no need to remove a whole sleeve to put another one on top of it. Oh, I would rather see like a couple sessions of that tattoo wiped out with a laser so I can do more on top of it. You could design a new sleeve, line it, and remove all the highlights and get away with a third of the laser removal that's actually done in the beginning. Yeah, basically, if you get it removed, and you'd have to cover it then. Because some cover-ups are damn near impossible to do. What do you do then? Then you sacrifice quality over, over sanctity? And I wonder if cover-ups is the right word. I think camouflage is a better one. I mean, that's why if you're going to get a cover, it's better to just do that, just, you know. You just slap in a lotus on top of something, ain't going to work, you know. But in general, it's a good thing because a lot of people have some shitty tattoos. I mean, people do make mistakes. I think I got the shittiest tattoo ever right here when I was 17. It's never a perfect result and uh, it hurts like hell, it's expensive. It did the job that I wanted and especially did it for me. I love tattoos and people that have them done right are, I'm very uh, envious of and uh, I always look at other people's and wish mine were better. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever been refused entrance anywhere because of your tattoos? The Vatican. Yeah, people treat me different as soon as they see I'm tattooed. You know. They made me wear a sweater. I wore my wife's sweater and they let me in. Some things happen talking to an old man, you know, for an hour, really nice. And as soon as I pulled up my sleeves, uh, But I made pretty conscious decisions to stop where I've stopped, um, partly because I'm a university professor. I mean, you get funny looks. I mean, like, you're in the middle of... I don't know, the middle America. They know that there's that side of me, but I think it's also important to them to know that their kids are being educated by somebody who isn't a freak. All these dudes walk in wearing all black and, you know, there's one that has makeup on and there's, you know, <laughs> dude in gold shoes. <laughs> I would refuse Guys service for the gold shoes and the dudes in makeup before the tattoos. I mean, if my appearance is like that, I don't know how they would treat me different. <laughs> but, uh... Just for the record, we're not the makeup wearers or the gold shoe wearers. Yeah. Especially when I got my knuckles done after that. Um, maybe some people might not be quite as friendly as they would. Most people are cool about it. If they ask me about it, they're just more interested in stuff and it's like, they really like it. I mean, I'm sure they never get it done themselves. It's like if you're going to like a normal club or a bar or whatever. I like being a tattooed man. You come in like your t-shirt and with your tattoos, then you're fucked. I like the attention it brings. Yeah, but I don't care, I go to another bar. I wear it as a badge of honor. Just got my neck done, so that'll, uh, <coughs> it might scare some old ladies and stuff. Although if there's a little old lady in, in a line with me at a store, I'll make sure she gets the good side, you know? <laughs> if I ever have to work a real job again, I don't ever want to work a job that is going to judge me for having a tattoo. I've had one or two emails saying I'm mad. I don't want to go to a place, a restaurant or a bar or anything that is going to judge me for having that. And that get people come up to me and say, ooh, shit. There's times, you know, when I get pulled over by a cop, you know, it's not like, can I see your license? It's like, are you on probation? I pull my sleeves down when I cross borders. I'm not, it doesn't make me upset. That's kind of what, what comes with it. You choose to, you know, put tattoos all over your body. I mean, my appearance is, is like a freak, so. They treat me like that. You make a statement with your outside appearance and gotta bear the consequences in a, in a way, if you like it or not. Well, you notice it in children if they're walking with their parents because they're the first to say, you know, oh, look at that. Uh, and then the parents go, shh. I sit in the last row of the seats in the buses in San Francisco with all the nutcases because I'm tattooed and I'm fine, you know. Especially if you go to like Asian countries and, and things like that, of that nature. Uh, in Japan. <laughs> <laughs>
Japan was weird early, like when Tom was the only one that had tattoos. When I first went over there, I was not allowed to show tattoos. Matter of fact, when Mick Harris went over there, he had to wear long sleeves. But not been allowed to swim in swimming pools in a couple of hotels because of it. And down there, it was just something you'd speak of, whether you had beads in your cock or whatever, you know, which is a whole nother level of commitment. <laughs> Restaurants, swimming pools. Um, like they'd freak out if you got in the pool. If you go swimming in the pools and the hotels, when you leave, they'll be draining the they'll drain the pool and clean it. Yes. <laughs> Next time we go to Japan, we're Let's going go swimming. swimming. And then when they drain it, get in again. There's a pool at the hotel. When I was with Soulfly, and they'll pull and go swimming, and they wouldn't let us in. They nice. drain the evil out of it. That's so beautiful. Because like the, you know, the evil is gonna come out of your arm into the pool. Yeah. But it, they think it's because it, it'll de-sterilize the pool. You know, when I was in Japan, it was kind of a trip, man. It's my first time in Japan just a couple months ago. Yeah, we had a little incident in Japan. It, um, definitely, obviously, the Yakuza thing. It's still kind of associated with Yakuza there. Like a, a supervisor woman came up and uh, said, do you guys have any jackets? Um, public places like bathhouses. I'd never gone to a bathhouse in Japan. I had no reason to, so. Uh, for what? Well, your tattoos, they're not going to let, you know, they're not going to let you on the plane with your tattoos. I mean, we're just... But in the airport, um, they usually tell me to put on a jacket or something. I'm not going to wear a jacket. Uh, it's, you know, it's obvious we're not the Japanese mafia, you idiot, you know? Which I respect. I'm like, all right, that's fine. You know, that's your thing. 45 minutes at the fucking airport, yeah. like, holding us up, not going to let us on the plane, like, not going to do our tickets. I mean, from what I hear, it's because of the Yakuza and... I'm a chubby white kid, and I was chances of me like, ain't gonna happen. I'm very respectful of everything they do in Japan, so. It's fucking ridiculous. And guess what? Nothing happened when we walked on the plane. I did get a lot of looks in Tokyo, man. But in America specifically, they judge the book by the cover. And people are usually afraid to talk to me. So, I've lost plenty of jobs because of my tattoo work. Uh, Philip and Felix and some of the other kids were asked to leave the swimming pool. Yes, in swimming pools, it happened to me, throw me out. When I walk down the street with my daughter, who lives in Ireland, she sometimes mentions to me that people are staring or like looking at her. Uh, in Russia, I've got uh, very bad vibes in the museum. Uh, a woman spat on me and yell at me. Yeah, I've got a few stories like that, yeah. So, you know, if I walk down the street and somebody read fear in their eyes, because they've seen your tattoos, I just accept it nowadays. I, I don't get bent out of shape over it. You know, people really look at you funny when you have a bodysuit and, and, you know, full sleeves and stuff. It's never upset me that I get the hairy eyeball because I'm tattooed. Well, they start, you know, trying to get tough and then you fart and they go away. <laughs> Wimps. <laughs> In the street, people calling me prostitutes. And... So, if anything, I have a lot of older women coming up to me or little kids and saying, Ooh, you know, are they real? I'm like, yeah, shh, you're gonna wake it up. It's gonna fly off my arm, you know. A few years ago, maybe, not so much now, because, you know, we're, we're more and more, uh, there's more and more of us now. Like, you know, my girlfriend's parents, for example, you know, they look at me like, oh, this fucking scum. But <laughs> she's bringing it home again, like, you know. I had a lad, a guy who was actually worked for me at the time, and he said, look at that horrible, that bloat. Oh, we'll blow those tattoos. <laughs> if you're going, you know, with girls out to a place, they want to go to a disco or something, I don't prefer it because I've written here, and it's my really opinion, death before disco. When she moves over to England, her family didn't really like it, so I don't really get invited for dinner. 100% <laughs> positive. Yeah, they asked him not to ever come back. Except for my mom. The only ever negative reactions I got are in very strictly Muslim countries and cities. And my mom always says, I always forget you're tattooed until we walk into the city and everyone stares at you. <laughs> what do you want? Um, perhaps have dinner because it's a restaurant. And they said, no, such people like you, we don't need. I'll tell you where it was weird I came across it. I go to Nashville to write sometimes, to do co-writes, and I was told that because I had tattoos, it would hold me back, it would, you know, it would be a hindrance if I wanted to do co-writes with certain people. If, 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 you, if, you, look, if you look proper and, and clean and, and nice and whatever, and skin color and, and that matter shouldn't make a difference. <laughs> that's actually, that's one of the things that tattooing has taught both of us. 
Not to judge other people. What is, what color, what's on your skin and what color is your skin? If you're writing a song with somebody, has that got to do with writing a song? I don't know, I just found that really bizarre. I think it's awesome. I mean, I mean, I've got my favorite band of all time right there. It's awesome. Dude, that's like the most incredible thing I've ever seen. I've met a few people with either Comeback Kid lyrics or Comeback Kid artwork. I mean, I have, you know, I have Bob Marley tattooed here. You know, I have uh, different tour, different tours, and I have Flogging Molly tattoos all over the place. You know. Scott usually gets lots of emails or something, people being like, hey, yeah, we just got this tattoo, check it out. There was one guy, didn't he have like a humongous back piece? Did he? There's even like older people, like moms and dads who have like Indian tattoos. There's this guy who had the whole like artwork for conviction or whatever, right? Yeah, on his is. ribs. You know, I've seen some portraits, like I've seen like a couple of kids with like a portrait of me and stuff. It's like a dream. When I was a young kid in a young punk band, the thought of someone getting your logo tattooed on it was like, you know, everyone's got uh, Black Flag and ACDC, you know, uh, but having my logo? Mm -hmm. And then there was like a mom who had it like on her back, like full on like back piece, and we we're just like, what the fuck? Like, well, it's like sometimes I look at some and think, that's just stupid. <laughs> Can't really do one on ones in here. It's a big place, a lot of people. Do do you find my mobile phone on my pocket now? It's like in the mosh pit. I was in the mosh pit all the time. Do you do find my mobile phone? <laughs> I don't, know if, I don't know if they like you, mate. Very flattering, you know. We're honored that somebody would be that interested in the band to get something that's so eternal. You know, it's always going to be there. And uh... oh, that's incredibly flattering that somebody would be that into your band that they would fucking have that put right on their flesh. You know, for the rest of their fucking lives. You know, it's like tattooing the name of your boyfriend or girlfriend. You know, maybe one day they're not going to like that line anymore. So <laughs> it's tough luck. You know. I think I'd never get a. a, a I suppose his name tattooed on me, again. The only safe name to put on you is Mom. That's it. Dad. I, I don't like it when it's badly done. And then I feel sorry for them, you know what I mean? It's like I feel guilty, because you know, I feel like somehow it's my fault that, they, that they, you know, I instigated that. I ended up with a horrible thing, you know, it's like, oh, poor kid, you know, I'm sorry. <laughs> like someone's got BMTH on the knuckles, just, and I'm just like, oh. You know, I've got lots of friends who've got meteor tattoos in the neck. It's crazy, it's like, in 10 years, what are you going to think about that? <laughs> so if it represents your life, and it's something that, you know, inspires you, makes you happy, Fuck yeah, get it. It's like, kind of, you got a fan for life there, because even if they stop liking you, they got to like you, because they've got your tattoo. And I gotta say, when I see Flog and Molly tattoos, I just, it, it makes me very, feel very good. If I got a band tattoo, the like, first bands I ever liked when I went to rock and stuff, I'd have like a Linkin Park tattoo or something on me, and I'd be gutted. I mean, I can remember uh, seeing Axl Rose from Guns N' Roses had Guns N' Roses, and that's why we all did the Coal Chamber. And I, you know, after that, it just exploded. It seemed like every band had their, their band name on their arm. And uh, I mean, if I could have been an influence to that, cool. But I'd like to think it was just people learned that it was OK to put what you love for the moment on your body forever. This one guy had like three giant pieces of me. On it, was it three? Yeah. On his it's body, insane. big pieces, you know. And uh, 
It's interesting, you know, you, you, you kind of feel like, well, I, I hope he likes my next record. When people come up with machine head tattoos, I know exactly what they're doing. That, that you know, I mean, Kiss was a band that, that you know, I would have lived and died for back in the day. And I think that, you know, we've got those kind of fans too. It's, it's a, you know, it's a mixture of feelings. One, it's like ex very like overwhelming flattery or, or like, you know, it's a flattering feeling. But at the same time, I'm like, dude, are you sure? Bands come and go, and I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of dudes kicking themselves for certain band tattoos that they've gotten back in the day. It's amazing that we create that kind of devotion and that kind of passion for our own fans, and I think it's it's amazing. I just hope we never let them down, and they're gonna be fucking pissed about that tattoo. There's a kid with like BMTH on his knuckles and stuff, and he's like, just be sure you like us enough before you do it. Like, but. Yeah, that's the ultimate compliment. I mean, uh, I don't know if it's stupidity or what it is, you know, but He's either way, I salute him. I'm honored. I mean, I never thought, when we started off like playing music, I never thought it was going to be someone who would like to have my face and my autograph on his leg. I get goosebumps now, because <laughs> that's, that's amazing. What can you say about that? I mean, tattoo, four faces yeah. with autographs and everything. Yeah, I mean, it's awesome that, that our music means that much to them that they want to, or that even like the imagery of the band means so much to them that they would want to like permanently tattoo that on them, you know? It's awesome. Not every band has that, you know? It's really cool that, you know, a lot of metal bands have it and Machine Head has it a lot, you know? If you love a band and you love music and, it mean, and it's maybe made your life, enhanced your life in some way, I think there's nothing wrong with getting that band tattooed on you. Oh, it's great. Oh, I think it's great. I love it. You know, it's nothing better when somebody comes up and they you know, they have the logo of your band or, or some artwork of your single tattooed on them, and I think it's fantastic. It's more religion to me than only music, Motorhead. You know, when we were kids, we looked at the Motorhead logo, and it was, it was, it was class, it was like, that's brilliant. It looks amazing on a t-shirt, it looks amazing on a jacket, it looks amazing as a tattoo. Thousands of kids that have the Life of Agony logo. That's cool, I have, I have it as well in the butterfly wings, too. Some people get, like, art names tattooed on, or you know, our, our autographs tattooed on them. What I really fucking hate the most is when some kid wants me to sign his arm and he wants to get my signature tattooed on his arm. The, and people ask me all the time to sign them. I think that's vile. and I don't like that at all. The only thing that I think is like weird is when they want to get like you're, they're like they're, you sign their arm, they're like, I'm going to get that tattooed tomorrow. You're like, dude, don't get my chicken scratch, fucking lame autograph on tattooed. You know, but they'll do it and they'll go to the next show and fucking there's his autograph and my autograph and you're like, whoa. In fact, someone wanted me to sign his name this tour, sign my name for him and he wanted to get it tattooed. I refused to sign my name on his arm. It just makes me cringe a little bit. I'm like, dude, you know, like, what if you hate our band in three years, you know? What if we put out an album you don't like? Just kind of scary. I sent them away, like, he was really disappointed, but I was like, dude, fucking like, think about what the fuck you're doing, dude. Yeah, I just did one the other night where everybody else's autograph was on there and they'd miss me, so I'd sign it. And you're like, you gotta sign it good, you know? <laughs> yeah. Sharpie skipping around, you're like, fuck. Just, just yesterday in London, I signed three Three people, you know, gonna go and get it tattooed. I don't care if fucking God came down or whatever, Moses or whoever. I don't give a fuck. Any enlightened being. I advise them not to do it, but, you know, they're gonna do it anyway. It's pathetic, I think. I don't like that. You could be a fan, you could love the music, man, but come on. I just, it's, it's just not cool. Five or six years down the road, they could end up hating our band, but they could be the type of people that are like, you know, this is a, this is a testament to who I was back in 2007.
Yes, the most fascinating body marking I've personally ever come across are the body markings on Ötzi. He has 15 tattoos 15. and uh, 13 stripes and two little crosses. They say the cross on his leg or wherever it was on him is actually two sticks that he'd rub together for fire. Of course, it could have meant making fire. This could mean, this also could mean weapons. He had a cross tattooed on him. How many thousands of years before Christ existed, you know? Just yet another thing Christ ripped off. For example, when a, a mosquito bites you and you put on a cross, then it doesn't itch anymore. You can try it. <laughs> yes, so we know for sure that Elizabeth was tattooed. She had an anchor on her shoulder. We can prove it with a piece, a part of the diary of um, her youngest daughter. Marie Valerie wrote a diary. When father entered and asked me if I cried because of the terrible surprise, namely that mother made her burn an anchor on her shoulder, what I found very original and definitely not so terrible it was important to her to, to have this symbol, but only for her, private. And I suppose that um, the, the anchor is her close relationship to the sea, to the marines. I think that the servants that had to do with her, the one that made the bath, the one that dressed her up, of course they, they, they saw that, but I think it's really top secret. Nobody would talk about that. Also Ötzi, for example, all these tattoos, 15 tattoos, they're right on acupuncture points. And not on, 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 on any acupuncture points, but on, right on these acupuncture points, Ötzi needed. They are right on the point that, uh, that strengthen a man that is not, not very young anymore. And he was 46 years old. Uh, Franz Josef was a conservative person. He grew up in the rules here. He was convinced that that's the right way to behave, uh, to be if you are so important, if you are an emperor or an empress. And uh, so for him it was a shock. But as I read before, you can see the younger generation, the daughter, she found it cool. The interesting thing is that we always thought that uh, acupuncture comes from China, okay? And that acupuncture is about two or three thousand years old. And the special thing is that we showed that acupuncture roots we also have here in the middle of Europe on this mummy of Ötzi. And this mummy is 5,400 years old. So acupuncture is much older than we thought before. And even today, Austrian people know the story, the history of Sisi. But not many of them know that she had an anchor tattooed on her shoulder. Ötzi got a very, very highly developed acupuncture. And this here in Middle Europe, in Austria, you can say, and uh, 5,000 years ago. So this could be maybe some sort of origin of tattooing.
people often asked about tattooing, is it art, is it handcraft, is it folk craft or what? I just think it's whatever you want it to be. Can be a little bit of art, but uh, I don't think it's fine art. The customer comes in and says, ah, I want a tattoo. And I say, okay, I'm be doing big yellow digs and only skulls around. And, and then the customer says, no, I actually, I just wanted the skull. No, sorry, today is my yellow dig day because I'm an artist. That's my inspiration for today. So I would be very, very poor, <laughs> especially on my yellow dig days, if you understand what I mean. Charlie Wagner, I guess, put more of them on than anybody in the world. Hell, I was in his shop. He let me work in there two months to get enough money to go to Florida. And a sailor come in, he wanted a, uh, an eagle on him. And Charlie says, no, no, today's hearts day. Right. And so, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't put nothing but hearts on. Oh, no, yeah. I want an eagle, Charlie. Yeah. I've been coming here a long time. No, all time. I said, maybe I'll get to you after a while. So after a while, the man put his arm down there. He drew a goddamn heart right on him. He yeah. didn't give him no goddamn eagle. Bob Roberts told me something I really liked. He said, a tattoo should look good when the lines are finished. It should look done when the black and gray's in it and the color's extra because you can't count on how well the color will age, but the black will stay. If you can't draw, you really shouldn't be tattooing, you know? So it's, it's definitely an art, man, without a doubt. You know, if you want to be a good tattooer today, uh, learning how to draw is a good idea. Because the biggest thing, even I see it today, people can draw incredibly on paper, and then when they put it to skin, it's like they're suddenly got retarded. Skin is no paper. It's just art, it's on your skin. They're artists, they draw, and it's, it's harder too than I would say traditional art because there's no do-overs. It's definitely art, you know, there's no doubt about it. It, it. It's just a medium that people have a hard time accepting. <laughs> For me, it's definitely more handcraft than art. So, I mean, I put the same creative energy into a tattoo as I do a painting, so how is it any different, you know? But I don't see myself as an artist. I'm a craftsman. I try to make good, long-lasting tattoos. I mean, you need, you need a certain level of proficiency in the handcraft tattoo to become an, a real artist. The craft is way more expo um, important than the art. Sort of the, the purpose of writing a dissertation is to, um, is to find out whether you're wrong about anything. Like if I had to choose a favorite chapter in the book, it would probably be where I compared opera fans to tattoo collectors. Which is always kind of a fun thing to try and explain to people who have no connections to tattooing, right? I mean, they think, you know, hearts with banners through them that say mom, and they think, how can anybody be a snob about that? Well, you'd be a snob about anything artistic. You know, you'd be a snob about motorcycles, about comic books, about uh, tattoos, about Picasso, or about Jackson Pollock. But the art is a part of it, you know? And it's an important part of it, you know? But at first comes the ink in the skin and how you get it in the skin and how the outlines look like and how the colors look like and the art uh, makes the whole thing even better. I mean it's you're using an, an extensive tool but you're still using everything you are to to get it out it doesn't matter what kind of whether it's the ancient way or the modern way you still it's an artless art man. Depends who's doing it. <laughs> I think that whatever anyone cherishes, if somebody gets something that they absolutely love and they get it and then it's something special to them, then you know, who's to say what is and what isn't? Tracy Emin, you know, I think her stuff's shit, but she'd probably look at mine and think the same, you know what I mean? I would describe it as folk art because it's, it's an art that's attainable by the ordinary working class man. Tattooing is for me the same as like a stonemason. When I do something fine, it reminds me absolutely about my handwork. And to do a right tattoo is a handwork. You know, there's many, many people that play guitar, but you cannot say that everybody that plays guitar is, is an artist. Like when Nick did this, he basically just put Sharpie marks on me and was doing stuff. And, and I was just watching this art take place and I was like, God damn. If you have a design and you have a, uh, make yourself a stencil and you can get that what's on the stencil in the skin and you make a fair outline, and you make a nice color, that's a good tattoo. You know, an art, being an artist, you don't, I don't think you can learn. You know, I think that you are you either art or you're not. The art alone doesn't make the tattoo, the handicraft does. It's more of a craft if you're simply reproducing flash, you know, design. Now, 
it is real art. You're not going to get anywhere uh, with just flash now. So you've got to be an artist. So it depends on the individual. Why you do it, how you do it. You know, that's what makes you an artist. Serial box art, I and mean, we need things, you know, to make our lives every day, decorative art, beautiful as well, you know, and doesn't always have to be on a high, super high level. I don't separate those things. Yeah. It's the same as trying to separate uh, Escher from mathematics. The good thing about tattooing uh, compared to mathematics is the fact that people can laugh at it. I remember seeing a, a video that Mike Stearns made in uh, San Francisco in the early 90s where he interviewed Dan Higgs and Dan said, you know, somebody wanted to come into me and ask me for a uh, Tasmanian devil. And he was reckless and, you know, dangerous and that was his character. I'd get the best fucking Tasmanian devil he's ever seen. And I've never thought of Tasmanian devils or vow tattoos as being especially artistic, but, you know, you can do them well. And a well done tattoo is a well done tattoo. Maybe an artless handcraft. I wanted to get tattoos way before I was tattooing because of, you know, seeing other musicians with tattoos and it looks cool. And when you're growing up, you see all, all, all your rock star idols, you know, they got, back then it was more like they just had like one, you know, when yes. I was, when I was in the kids, it was like, you know, Peter Chris had the little drum right there, like Paul Stanley had the rose and he was always like that. It was like, whoa, dude, a tattoo. Yeah. <laughs> Ever since I can remember looking at wild rock dudes, they always had tattoos, so. Not really sure what the origination of it is, but it seems to go hand in hand pretty good. It's like kids just go and they like, you know, part of being in a band now is just going out and instantly getting sleeved. Like you see all these like, you know, 18, 19 year old, like a tray or whatever, like completely sleeved on their first album. You're like, whoa, you know. I guess like there's some sort of rebellious streak in everybody that does it because you, you know, you're not really supposed to. You know, you hear that you're not supposed to from pretty much everybody who's not tattooed. Outlaws, bad boys. Rock and roll. Society looks at you like an asshole a lot of the times because of it, but fuck them. Literally, but fuck them. You know, rock and roll is, you know, has aggression in a way. They're both kind of subcultures, you know. You know, it doesn't have to be. It doesn't necessarily have to be negative aggression. Because when you have a tattoo, you have to be uh, rock and roll. Tattoos are rock and roll. Because tattooing is rock and roll, man. <laughs> So it's like, I think that's why there's a strong connection between like rock and tattoos because it's just another way to express yourself. It's another way to say that you're not the same as everyone else. It's just like a, it's a freedom in a way, you know? And being able to paint yourself represents a particular freedom that you choose to take with your own body. You know, people in bands have tattoos, so maybe lots of like fans or kids see that and are like, oh, well. Gene Simmons has tattoos, I want to get a tattoo too, or, you know. You want to hear a fucking story about this Gene Simmons tattoo? And we did a big show in California at the Rose Bowl with Kiss, who it really wasn't because fucking Peter and Ace weren't there. So someone from the magazine saw this and said, oh man, I think it'd be really cool to get a picture of a roadie, quote unquote. I don't like that word roadie because it sounds like I should be in the back of a trailer getting a blowjob. So they're like, I'm like, cool man, I can have Gene sign it and I'll get it, you know penned in. I sat in a room for three and a half hours waiting for this motherfucker to come. 
So he finally comes in with one of his people. He looks down on him and he goes, I'm not signing that, and just walked out of the room. You can be a sentimental and have a cock and still not be a Coldplay fan. I mean, heavy metal and, and tattooing was against the grain, kind of, you know, rebel kind of stuff. It, it goes against the grain, you know, of society for the most part in, in a lot of cultures, you know, some cultures, more and more these days. Maybe it's a good excuse not to get like a real job. You know, the, the rebellious, and that's kind of goes hand in hand with being a musician. You get, you get tattooed enough and nobody will hire you if you get them in the wrong places. Yeah, that's why, that's why Travis Barker has tattoos. Yeah. That's why he got all his tattoos on his throat and his hands and stuff, because he never wanted to have to work a real job. <laughs> I think one of the, the main reasons I did get tattooed so much is, well, one hour I got kind of addicted to it, but at the same time it's, it's kind of a way to, to make yourself never get into a normal way of life. I don't want to work a real job. Fake jobs for life. Juice has a fake jobs tattoo. Yeah. If you've got tattoos all over your body, no one can, you can't get a real job, so you're always going to have to do something for yourself. And Fuck real jobs. Like make, a, make something out yourself rather than working for someone else. So. When I first heard Metallica, like in sixth, seventh grade, I wanted to be, you know, James Hetfield immediately. And I played hockey and I would like stand in front of a mirror with a hockey stick and act like I was James Hetfield. And I had a sweet mullet too. I mean, I always thought it was cool that Hetfield didn't have any tattoos. I was kind of bummed when he started getting them. I was like, dude, you lasted all that time being like the man without fucking having a single tattoo. Then you got tattoos, you know? In a country such as Finland, where I come from, tattoos are still looked upon as, you know, jailbird type of thing by, by older people. I think that maybe like, you know, 10, 20, you know, like f even 50 years ago, people that only, the only people that had tattoos were like prisoners and, you know, people like that, sailors and shit. You know, it's not like America nowadays. Everybody's got tattoos and it's all good for everybody and sleeves are fine. Now sleeves are getting boring, man. And I guess like as the time has, you know, changed and the, and the world has changed, it's been more acceptable to get tattoos and especially in a world where like we don't have to answer to some asshole with a collar, you know, who's like, where's the reports? But on the same token, I always think it's cool when I meet a musician or an artist who doesn't have any tattoos. You know, like I always think it's really cool because everybody has tattoos now, you know? And like when they don't, I'm like, wow, cool, you didn't give in. So I think nowadays it's more rock and roll not to have a tattoo and play in a rock band. I mean, fucking a lot of the Lamb of God dudes don't have tattoos and it ain't like they're having any trouble, <laughs> you know? They're not tattooed? Yeah, I'll tell you what he has though. He has a part down the center. Randy has a part down the center of his head. When he was in uh, Burn the Priest, yeah. he was at Rule Truth Show and he dove off the stage and went straight into a pillar in the middle of the club and got like 60 something stitches. He may not be tattooed, but he's definitely he's scarred. scarred. <laughs> Anything that pisses off your mom is cool, you know? So, <laughs> tattoos and rock and roll, I mean, what else is there, you know? <laughs> uh, I was staying at Phil Ensemble's house from Pantera, and it was me and, and Paul. We are living there, actually, and I woke up early one morning, and Paul was outside with all these jars of fetuses that he uses for his drawing techniques, and he was cleaning jars. And I went down to Philip, I said, dude, Paul's outside, you know, out, right outside your door with all these jars of fetus. I mean, I think you should have him come in the house. And he comes walking up in his robe and he goes, hey, Paul. And Paul turns around and he goes, get them goddamn babies back in the house. <laughs> you know Megadeth? Yeah. I massaged the singer, what's his name, Dave Mustang or something? And I said, you're the first heavy metal, you know, rock star that I've ever massaged that doesn't have any tattoos. And he goes, baby, you don't put a bumper sticker on a Cadillac. There's a lot of pain involved with rock music. There's a lot of drugs and disorientation and heartache that, that where rock music kind of came come from, you know, loveless loves and, and just, you know, that's why we play rock. That's why I do it, you know? It's one of those things that they definitely go together, man. I can't really say why. There's a marriage there, you know? It all fits nicely together. I think the aggressiveness of the music meets the character it takes to get tattooed. You know, because two are, are, are both um, edgy forms of expression, pushing the limit of the body, mind, and soul. 
And I think what happened was, for me, when the, the punk movement started and all the picture discs came out and the covers on the records, there was fucking brilliant artwork there. So I started to tattoo that on people, like loads of people were getting that done. It, you know, I, as I said, as a kid, I started, I was into metal and then I started getting all in sorts of all other sort of things. And then, you know, you, you discover, You discover like punk and hardcore and things like that, and as I started started to go to those type of shows, instantly like everyone's just got like gnarly tattoos, and they're just like, "Whoa, that's sick!" You know, suddenly they were seeing punks with tattoos on, so they'd get it. In doing in like getting into that kind of stuff, you feel like, dude, like what's the big deal with tattoos? And they're awesome. Like, look how cool that one looks. You know, if you're an artist or anything, you you tend to just want to express yourself and let people know what you're about. And that, I think that, that translates in, into, you know, being a 15 year old kid wearing an Iron Maiden shirt, like as a badge of who you are and who you back. And we're not here to drag a bunch of kids that just want to dress up along here. We're here for people who are real artists and are about inspiring other people to get off their ass and do something. And I think as you get older, you find different ways to do that, whether it be like grow your hair real long or, or get tattoos. Uh, I'd rather be you know, the creator of everything. Because of the fact that both are considered, you know, not underground in a way of being minimalistic and nobody's into it, but underground in a way of against the norm. It's like you carry your soul on your skin or so, you know. I love seeing tattoos and, and you know, anybody that criticizes someone with tattoos is really just is, is behind the time. I guess it's like everybody says, you get one and then you want more and they're addictive and that's the truth. And I have all of my tattoos are unfinished because I'm broke and lazy and it hurts. Tattoos are just a colorful, interesting thing for, for us to all enjoy, even if we don't have them. This is kind of more like the punk rock thing and also just the fact that, you know, with Brutal Truth, especially our music, it's just fucking chaotic as hell. <laughs> I mean, I, I can tell you embarrassing moments. It's like when somebody comes in the shop and you went, fuck, you know, who done that shit on you? You know, when you did 20 years ago, you know? I was tattooing a guy from Cor Cor Corsica, Corsica, a Corsican guy. I didn't speak English, French. He actually did speak English, but he didn't want to speak English, you know? They're really proud. They just want to speak French, you know? Le ship, le space, le ship, le space, you know? And he had a spaceship tattooed there on his arm from Amar, and he wanted to get it like a little bit covered, the shipless space, you know. So I was like, okay, yeah, spaceship, here he goes, you know. And I was like, super nice spaceship doing for three hours already. Uh, Enterprise meets Star Wars. And all of a sudden his uh, nephew came in the room, you know, and looked over the shoulder and then he whispered in my ear and said, hey, you know, Bernie, my uncle wanted to get a sailing ship to uh, flying in space tattoo. And I was like, oh my God. This guy had been to a Chinese restaurant and on the bill, he had this writing and he said, uh, I want you to do this on my girlfriend here. He said, it's my name, Andy. And uh, I want a little flower with it. So I'd done it on his girlfriend. I tattooed Andy on, on her with this little cherry blossom. And then, um, you know, in those days we used the old hectographic stencils, no stencil makers, you know, and made ones. And this kid come round and he'd had a few tattoos and he went, I'd like to get something e exotic from the Far East, some writing or something. So I looked on the side and this stencil was on there. I said, well, you know what? I've got this in Chinese, it says, good luck. <laughs> so <laughs> I whacked it on him. So he said, it tattooed Andy on him, you know, it told him it said, good luck. I mean, really, it's out of order, but in them days, you know, 
young and unprincipled. So a few weeks later, he come back going mad. He was going, fucking hell, man, I'm in a pub. I see this fucking bird with the same tattoo that you, and you've done it. And it says Andy, and you tattooed Andy on me. He was going really mad. And I said, uh, mate, I goes, listen, just calm down. I said, do me a favour. I said, it actually says good luck on both of you. I said, but don't tell her because she thinks it says Andy. He went, oh, cheers, pal. I know what about you. That what you have to have the back of your neck changed. Remember that biohazard record that was like state of the world address or something? Well, Evan Seinfeld got that tattooed in Europe. He got the word state of the world address, but in Europe they spell address with one D or something, and we spell it with two in America, so he gets to go home and just put up for the rest of his life people going, dude, you know there's two Ds in address. Yeah. The one that made me sort of like go, God, fucking hell, made me go cold. I did, did this piece around this guy's leg, and what it was, it was like, um, it was like a tribal piece of work. And it was just made up of continuous lines, but to make a shape within it, the lines would go a bit thinner. So what I, had, I, I put all, I put a big stencil on, and then started, but obviously with it being on the leg, they never quite meet up. So what I was doing was, I was, I'd, I'd drawn it all on, got it all on, and then I started in filling them, but to actually sort of start a line and go all the way around, and then come back and go all the way around. So I thought, fuck that. So what I did was I started and what I did was I dotted all the lines, but when I filled them all in, fucking one didn't fit, and every fucking one of them was wrong. Shit. It was the customer's fault because uh, he asked me for his son's name. His, his name is Patrick. I spelled it right with the CK. Then he came up and, oh, Patrick is just written with the K without the C. I told him, really? Yeah, for sure. And I uh, told him that uh, I don't think that's uh, the truth. But he made me do it without the C, and uh, then he came home to his family and they laughed about him. I can think of a few. Misspelling Harley Davidson on a huge biker in New Orleans. <laughs> I remember doing a leopard on a girl at the same convention and spacing out. Halfway through the line job, I realized instead of doing circles on the animal, I was doing squares. <laughs> I did this tattoo of a, on this guy, this is years ago, you know, but um, it was Jesus. He was on the ground, pushing himself off the ground with a cross on his back. And he wanted to say, struggle never ends. And I drew it up, drew the lettering up, and um, looked good to me, looked at it, uh, showed him the drawing, you know, he liked it. Um, I put the stencil on him. It's like, okay, cool, looks good. He liked it. I did the tattoo. Then the next day I came into work and uh, one of the guys who worked in the shop goes, hey man, I gotta show you something. He goes in the back and he brings the, my stencil out uh, and says, you know, is there anything wrong with this? I'm like, I'm like, oh my God, my heart fucking sank, you know. Um, it said, stuggle never ends instead of struggle. You know, I forgot the R. This girl was, I sat there down in a chair like that and I, and I was really concentrated. It was my second tattoo, I was sweating, man. I was like, can't fuck up, yeah. So I was doing good, I was doing the lines, and and Philippe goes, hey, Titin, and there was loads of people in the shop, and the girl was like going like this on the chair, yeah, and I didn't see it, I was so concentrated on my thing, yeah. She passed out, man, she totally passed out. I passed out and not the customer. <laughs> this was a tattoo that like a dude came on the bus, I'll give you tattoos, all right, come on, ride on the bus for a while. We fucking got this one and I was like, yeah, cool, all right. And then I fucking sat there, I want a sword, yeah. And then I fucking sat there and I went in the mirror and I was like looking at it and then I kind of went like this. <laughs> and I was like, ah, oh, bendable sword. I was like, what the fuck? I had a, a bloke come in once and he said, uh, oh, 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 all right, mate. And I said, yeah, he said, I, 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 I what's the fucking matter with him? He said, I, I, I want to get a, a swallow done. I said, okay, with, with two s scrolls. I said, okay, do you want names in the scrolls? And he went, yeah. I said, what do you want in the first one? He went, Rose. I said, okay, is that your wife? He went, yes. And then I said, and what do you want in the, the one underneath? He said, my name. I goes, well, what's your name? He went, Don. And this other geezer in the shop just went, he won't get all MDs in that scroll. <laughs> I was just like, oh no. Back in my early days, I was in about a year and I was tattooing this girl on her ankle. 
and I had her on a bed in front of me, and so her ankle was kind of like, I had my elbows on my knees, and I was, you know, just kind of leaning over, working on her ankle, and um, her mother and uh, was at the other end of the table with her, kind of holding her hand, and her boyfriend was in and out of the room, getting increasingly pissed off, and I didn't really know why, you know, but he was being a big baby, you know. I always wanted the mother to come out and look at designs with him, and, you know, no one was talking. I'm just doing my little tattoo on her ankle, and when they got all done, um, they left, you know, and I sat back. It was the middle of summertime, and uh, um, I had a, when the door to my room had opened for them to leave, um, I sat back, and... I felt a cool breeze in my crotch, and I looked down. Back then, I could see my crotch, <laughs> and uh, I, uh, um, one entire nut worked its way out of a tear in the crotch of my pants. So the whole tattoo, I had my nuts hanging out. You know, <laughs> the mother and daughter were both staring. Like if you look at the tattoo from where they were standing, right past them <laughs> is my balls. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, that was definitely embarrassing. <laughs> but mom didn't leave the room, so. <laughs> so then, all you young people, let's keep in mind, yeah. You have-
I don't know over here, do you guys have like shows like Miami Inc? Miami Inc? Never heard about that. Heard about no. It. Where is that? I think the worst thing for tattooing right now is reality shows. There are two reality shows in the States now. There's Miami Inc and there's Inked. And of the two of them, Miami Inc is clearly the better. There's two camps on this one. You'll you'll get the one lot who'll say like, oh, it's a sack of shit. It encourages people to come into the profession who shouldn't and blah, blah, blah. blah. A lot of people have uh, kind of mixed feelings about those shows, you know. nothing to do with tattooing the way I know it. It has other side effects like uh, putting unrealistic expectations into clients, but it gives people the wrong idea of what tattooing is about. We actually show the reality of the way that it really is. It's not just a case of like, oh yeah, come in and we're going to do this like full sleeve and so just give me five minutes while I sketch it up. <laughs> yeah, right. People out there think you can do a back piece in 10 minutes because it's done on TV in 10 minutes, you know. And well, one thing that has been on London Inc. that you haven't seen on Miami Inc. is where we actually turn clients away because we don't want to do it. That's one of the reasons I stopped sending work in because everyone kept asking me how I get that brown effect. And I'm like, it's bruising, it's a fresh tattoo, you know. I think that the culture that gets tattooed doesn't want to see it on TV because then it becomes fashion mall tattooing. I know band reality shows really drive me fucking crazy. I hate that shit. So I guess tattoo artists maybe feel the same. For people who know anything about tattooing find frustrating about Miami Inc. is that they don't spend enough time on the tattooing. I haven't seen a good one, really. Uh, I'm quite fucking bored about it. Uh, I think it's pretty fucking arrogant. It's just not the way it is. Uh, it doesn't talk about tattooing, yeah. It talks about people. And they spend a lot of time about people talking about memorializing dead people and their deep, profound reasons for getting the, you know, 87 millionth piece of kanji or, you know, a cherry blossom on their shoulder. The only thing I don't like about, like, Miami Ink and stuff is uh, all the sob stories, man. I'm not into all the drama and all the stuff around it. And this is my next door neighbor's cat that died and it was run over, so I want a tribute to it and we want to put put a piece of toast with it because we think that that's cool and it's in memoriam of mom I can tell to the camera why I've done it you know this is about like you know this was a really rough time in my life and like I really felt like I had to get the symbol of the old you know they just start going into this thing it would be like a little star and like that reflects my entire terrible childhood and why I'm upset and it's like what people crying on TV you know what I really can't stand is these stories behind the tattoos some of them are just strict, so goofy. So for me, tattoos are like the ultimate souvenirs. And I'm going to start tattooing myself as well at one point. I'm going to do my own legs, just uh, memento style, more or less, just writing down lyrics and bits and pieces of information that are important for me so I can always, when I wake up, I can see like an important phrase. A tattoo is a memory that you hold on to forever. Like what some uh, what Christian sects used to do at one point. You have a reminder of where you come from and some Mexican gangs, they have the similar sort of thing, the, the Trinity, the hobo Trinity thing and all that. It's just uh, your own way of symbolizing and trying to remind you, you yourself who you are, where you come from. You're documenting stages of your life. I get a lot of tattoos to remind myself of, of certain things that have happened in my life and mementos and places I've been or people who have died that I don't want to forget. You know, Johnny could die any time and it was going to get even worse. And he had been such an important, such a beautiful part of my life. So I said, I'm literally going to put this behind me. I said, I'm going to get the tattoo. That's the reason why there's 29 stars in the circle. It was my 29th year with the band. They all, they all mean something. They all have a special significance to me. Kind of just some memories from, so from uh, being on tour and checking out different parts of the world. Um, a time, a person, an experience, uh, something to remember. Usually what I'm doing nowadays, I'm, I'm getting tattooed with each and every album. They also kind of represent people I've lost in my life. You know, meanings, meanings are, are very personal. I mean, a tattoo can mean many different things. I couldn't imagine having a tattoo that didn't mean anything to you. Every single tattoo I have means something and was something along the way of something and it's... You see the vaya? There's vaya con Dios. When my, um, it was the last thing that my great-grandfather ever said to me before he'd passed away. 
Why, why not come to us, you know? Go, go with God. But hey, you wouldn't be a heavily tattooed person if you didn't have uh, some tattoos you regret, so. I just always like the way a lot of color looks. There's not a lot of meaning behind any of it. A lot of people just go in and they just pick something off the wall or they, they just get a tattoo because it looks cool. It's like, it's just like doodling on your arms. It's like I like, you know, and plus for me being a drummer, all I have to do is wear shorts. I don't have to buy all these clothes like all the other guys do because I have tattoos, you know? You know, why are you getting this tattoo? It just, it just looks cool. It's got no meaning whatsoever, you know? At least people are seeing like pretty decent work going on. That's important, you know, it's not a bunch of hacks. Do I think the exposure is good for the profession? Sure, it'll make more customers, get people more interested in tattooing. It has brought it to the public's attention, it's, you know, and business hasn't suffered as a result of it. Will it bring the whole thing down? I don't know. Miami Inc, in my opinion, has done more to further tattooing, whether you like it or not, it's done more to further it than any other show, including the one that I do. It changed everybody's life, hasn't it? Because what it did was it made people aware of what custom tattooing really was. People come with that image they see from TV and it's up to you in the studio to bring it down to a realistic uh, level. And at the end, it brings more customers, I think. There's, a, there's more business in most tattoo studios. Everyone's saying, you know, their shops are busier. Yeah, you're always going to get your knobheads who'll think, oh, fucking hell, I'm going to do that. And they buy the kit off eBay or whatever. And hey, I can do this, wait. <laughs> I'll buy a machine off eBay and, uh, you know, I have a friend who wants a tattoo and I'll just try it. You know, but the fact of it is, is that those kits were on eBay before Miami Inc. came along. I heard a couple of opinions of other artists that uh, they are scared that it's becoming too popular and it's not underground anymore and uh, not old school anymore. All the people who are sitting there moaning about it, they'd be the first to fucking moan if people stop coming in the studios. Oh, the, the more people see the shows, the more people get tattooed. Even though they moan about it, they've still got people coming in the studio as a direct fallout of those programs. They're going from a little flower and they're going from a sleeve because they're actually seeing it being done on TV. In my opinion, if somebody does shit work, then he disappears. It opened it up to a whole new audience. And yeah, even when it's not, not nothing special or nothing um, underground anymore, yeah, it became part of, of, of our society again. People always sort of, you know, they say to me like, oh yeah, but in the good old days, fuck the good old days, in the good old days, you'd work for, you'd go like four, five, six weeks without making a penny. It's like, do I want to go back to those days? Do I? Fuck.
least one person, if they watch this, I wish would speed up. And that's my good friend Bob Terrell. <laughs> oh God, Bob takes like slow motion to a new dimension. Um, yeah, I think Lyle Hardy needs to slow down, man. He tattoos way too fast, and his tattoos look like shit, man. <laughs> Especially about those. And, <laughs> and crazy bikers. <laughs> and crazy bikers. I like to think I wouldn't be standing in McDonald's going, you want fries with that? <laughs> I wanted to get a tattoo in my life because it was Bernie Luther. He could have put a penis on my arm. I would be like, holy shit, it's Bernie. Check out the head, though. We'll keep her going. Yeah. Like I told you, cornbread and black-eyed peas. <laughs> you know what I mean. Hey, what the... You crazy? Thank you. <laughs> you know what I have tattooed here on my leg? Fressen, ficken, fernsehen. Eat, fuck, and movies. <laughs> I know there's an organization, uh, Christian Tattoo Association, I think. I'm not a member, <laughs> so. <laughs> you still got the fucking Irish accent, how'd that happen? How the fuck am I going to use the Irish accent? Uh, I'm sorry for that.